So in this third video of the binomial probability, I strongly recommend you watch the first two. So please go back, especially to the one right before this, because these videos definitely tie into each other. But in case you skip to this one, I'm going to do just some quick review, though I feel like the bigger picture was done in the previous two videos. So we're going to expand on example 7b. In the previous problem, we had 25% as our success rate. And in that previous problem, our P was a high school dropout. So we're looking for high school dropouts, and that dropout percent rate was 25% or 0.25. So if we look at this idea of what does it mean when we type in the binom CDF and this statistic information, it means that we have a trial of 10 people. So I have 10 circles here pictured. The 0.25 is the success rate of being a dropout. And the two stands for we want to have exactly two dropouts or one dropout or none of the students to be a dropout. So this is actually doing three problems at once. It's doing the binom PDF of 10.25 and 0. It's doing the binom PDF, finding that exact probability at 10.25, 1, and the binom PDF of 10 comma 0.25 comma 2 and adding them all together to get us one answer. So this means we're taking our 2, 1, and 0 dropout probabilities. And because we did this on the previous section, Let's show how we did that. Turn on our calculator, move it over here so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to now click the on button, second vars. Click up from the bottom because this will let me get to the binom CDF faster. Click enter. And you can see that it's already loaded up from the previous example. I had 10 trials. My P is 0.25. My X value is 2. And I just type these in. Since they're already typed in, I just have to hit enter and then I hit paste, and that gives me the formula. If you have an older calculator, you would just type this in using the parentheses above the eight and the nine key, and the comma above the seven key. And that gives you your answer of 0.526, which is 52.6%. So let's write that down. The answer to this problem was 52.6% or 0.526. Okay, so. Since I could have had fewer than three, the possibilities were two, zero, and one dropouts, right? So two, zero, and one. Well, I'll just write two, one, and zero. So let's actually do the binom PDF for this and, and see if we get the actual answer. So we're going to write down our binom PDF. I don't know why I just capitalized them there, but hey, I did it for style. 0.25 and 2 binom PDF 10.25 and 1 and binom PDF 10.25 and 0. Now in class, what I would do is I'd have each of the rows pick one of these so we could do them a little faster, but I'll do each one of these just so you can see them out. So I'm gonna move this over so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm gonna hit clear, get to a nice clear screen, second vars, move up from the bottom, and let's find the binomial distribution for this specific value. Let's go with 10.25 and the x value here is going to be 2. 
We found that on the previous video to be 0.28 because we're going to round to two decimals. Now if I hit second enter, I can actually go back and change that 2 to a 1 instead of jumping through all those hoops. Okay, so I get 0.19. Um, and I think maybe instead of two decimals, let's round to 3. 3 is going to be give me a more, more accurate value. And let's hit second enter and turn this 1 into a 0. The chances of us having no uh, high school dropout. So that's 0.5056. So, I'm going to quickly write these down here. Um, let me go and, since I have my notes written to the side, I can kind of do this without the calculator in front of me. Whoops, didn't mean to scroll up there. All right, so this is going to be point at 2, point 0.282, because we're going to round to three decimals here. 282. At 1, it's going to be point 0.188. And at zero, it's 0 0.056. So we had all three of these together, and we're going to go 0 0.282 plus 0.188 plus 0 0.056. Boy, it is kind of nice that I accidentally scrolled upwards because if you add all these together, you get 0 0.526. And 0 0.526 is kind of important because that's what we did here and here. Boy, aren't you glad your calculator saved you all that work? And it wasn't too bad typing each one of these in. But I'm going to show you a situation where you're going to want to think your way out of this problem because doing it even on the calculator would be a bit extreme or easily wrong. So let's think about this situation. We're going to pick another 10 people at random. Now, what we want is let's say we're recruiting for our alternative high school and we want a large group of dropouts. So we want three or more dropouts. So what that means is that we want basically the circles to be filled in three or more. So we want either three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten dropouts. And again, we would include these two Ds here as well, dropouts, because we would have three or more. So we're looking at, you know, going greater than three. So we're looking at three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, you know, we want this situation, three, four, five, it's gonna get maybe a little messy here, six, uh-oh, might run out of room, seven, eight, can I make it, nine, or ten to be dropouts, I made it, there's five, and there's another five. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to erase these dots. You have them written down so you can kind of visualize it there. But if I leave these dots here, uh, this Microsoft document is going to get really confused about what I'm going to start writing down. It's going to want to connect the dots and just get a little bit too crazy and chaotic there. Now, a lot of times people say, oh, wow, okay, so I want uh, the, my, my, my obvious number to program into the calculator is three here. Um, and I get an answer of 0.776. And because we're allowing the calculator to do the work, um, you're, you're kind of not understanding that that problem is wrong. Um, it's wrong because the binom CDF works as a less than or equal to three. Like what you just typed in is you typed in this is the amount less than or equal to three, not three or more. So you have a situation where you have one, two, three dropouts, or two dropouts, one dropout, or no dropout out of your 10 people. So that's not what you want. You can see that what is highlighted in green is not what we want, which is highlighted in yellow. So we need a situation that maps the highlighting in yellow. But you might say to yourself, okay, I can do this because if I really want greater than or equal to three, this is gonna mean that we need actually eight computations. This is terrible. So we need the complement of x greater than or equal to three, okay? Because in the problem, it stated that you wanted three or more. So what we want is the complement of that. 
So what is the complement of greater than or equal to three? Well, that's going to be the probability of x, which is less than or equal to two, because the complement of this yellow streak is actually what we did before, is putting the d on the other side and this side and then none here, and then that gives us the probability less than or equal to two. And if we find that probability, we could then go one minus the probability of less than or equal to two. Okay, so how do we handle this? Well, luckily we have done um, these binom CDFs enough that we have this one minus the binomial cumulative distribution function. And we're gonna then have 10 comma 0.25 comma two. So now we have this cumulative distribution function and that is going to give us 1 minus 0.526, which we've done many times before, which gives us 0.474 or 47.4%. Now, this is a concept of turning a greater than or equal to problem into a less than or equal to problem that's going to take you some practice. In fact, the fourth video that I'm making in this series here is going to be just you trying to practice it. So let's just quickly, before we get to the fourth video, just have you take a look at this hypothetical situation. And what we have is, what are the chances that more than six, so this is greater than or equal to six, sorry, more than six is just greater than six, or X is greater than or equal to seven. What is the, um, what is the complement of this? So pause the video and see if you can figure this out because the calculator will not do very well a problem that's a greater than problem. So we need, we need to con connect this to a less than or equal to problem and that is the best way to do it because that's how the calculator works on it. So um, go ahead, try it out and see what you find. All right, hopefully you gave it a try because the correct answer is one minus, because this is the complement of this, one minus x, which is less than or equal to six. That is the complement of x is greater than six. So the greater than six complement is less than or equal to, or if you thought of it as greater than or equal to seven, the complement is less than or equal to six. So. What we're going to do is take this probability of x less than or equal to 6 and go 1 minus the binom CDF of 10 comma 0.25 comma 6. And we let the calc do the work and that's 1 minus 0.996, which is going to be highly unlikely 0.004 or 0.4%. So if you basically want to get a group of 10 people and hopefully find that there are six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 dropouts in this group, it's very unlikely. Although again, sociologists and psychologists might say people travel in cohorts and I, okay, we get that, but from a pure statistical standpoint, highly unlikely. All right, so before you click on the fourth video, I would like you to try to do all of the fourth video. I'd like you to try from the top to the bottom to do all of that and then check your answer, please. All right, thank you for sticking through this challenging video on the third part of our binomial distribution videos series.